alumni relations cell with Spilani Goa. Hello and welcome everyone. We thank you all for joining in on time. I'm Simran and I'll be co-hosting this talk with Anish. In addition to our previous talks by distinguished alumni from various walks of life, we present to you another series of talks, Industry Insights. As a part of our Industry Insights series, we present before you a session wherein we have invited our most accomplished alumni to throw light on their experiences and their journeys, as well as to provide valuable insights on pursuing a career in the core electronics field. On our panel today, we have with us Mr. Rohan Garg, Ms. Anshila Sharma, and Mr. Rishav Raj. We're also extremely delighted to have the HOD of the Electrical Department, Dr. Abhijit Pethe, with us today. Thank you for gracing us with your presence, sir. The stage is all yours. All right, so first of all, um, thank you for having me here. As an alumni, I'm also delighted that ARC is taking these steps, um, you know, to enhance interest in non-CS. This, uh, this is a good step, and I hope that these talks will continue and provide a lot of help and insight to all the students who are currently enrolled. So, um, this is a topic which is very really passionate with me, uh, primarily because I think um, as a student of electronics, uh, even though I finished my degrees at work, I still concern myself because I'm learning something every day. Um, it's a fun field. I mean, I, I'm passionate about it. I enjoy teaching it. I enjoy thinking about it. And, um, you know, there's so many problems around the world. There's so many things you can do that it's always fun when you start playing around with electronics. So for me, um, it was, it's a no brainer. I think it's, it's just a fun, if you're passionate about what you're doing in electronics, it's always going to be a fulfilling career. And there are paths to have a fulfilling career. Um, I know a lot of you on this panel, because of the fact that you might be just starting out on your career probably in a year or two, might consider that might have heard that you know pays are less or you know uh, you won't rise up high things are difficult well that's true things are difficult but uh, you know if you like what you're doing it's never difficult so i think if you're passionate about what you're doing uh, you would have fun in taking up a career here and that applies overall when you're planning for your career i think what you need to spend your time and that's uh, when you're a student you have access to some good classes. You have access to some good faculty here. You have access to some of your best uh, peers who later on might become your bosses, might become your co-workers. Um, and in general, there's a great talent pool and a brain trust that you have here on campus. And I think you owe it to yourself to use these four years to think about what is it that you're passionate about. And just because in AAA department, if you have an A3 or an A8 or an AA in your degree, it doesn't mean you have to be passionate about AAA. It doesn't mean you have to be passionate about what you're doing. But figure it out, right? It's it's a good place to do that. You have all the, um, what do you say, uh, opportunity available here to figure that out. Figure out what you're passionate about, then find doing a career in something that you're passionate about will always be rewarding. One final thing. Um, before you guys start on this, I just wanted to something which has been bothering me over the last, uh, I think, a years ever since we up and embarked on this online education. You know, there have been a lot of uh, comments on a lot of online boards. I see, you know, and then you have the advent of some of the new startups who claim that university education is of no use. It's skill-based learning that is required by the industry. Um, it's true, skill-based learning is required. But skill, along with skill base, you need to have your fundamentals. You need to know what is it that you're working on, what is it you're doing. Skills without having a knowledge are useless because they will be, uh, they, they will get outdated soon. And remember that any field for the matter, engineering apart, any field you take for the matter, you never can stop learning because whatever you learn will be outdated in a few years. So this thing that you're embarking on when you start your career in any field, you need to keep in mind that you can only rest on what you've learned for maybe a couple of years. Things, and so you have to continuously keep upgrading yourself, continuously keep reading, continuously keep upskilling yourself. And that's how you get 
success in any field you choose. And especially because I am from electronics, I'm working in the industry. I think that is very important. If you want to continue in the industry, you want to become leaders. And one thing keep in mind, you all have to become job creators. I think one of the problems which our country is facing today, and I think a lot of developing economies around the world are facing, is the lack of jobs. So keep in mind your game also, if you're going to go into the industry, I would request you to think about becoming a job creator. How do you become? Hopefully the alumni will help you at least figure out what that you want to work. But always keep in mind that you need to eventually become a job creator. You are some of the best students students some of the best brains in the country so you shouldn't stop at just doing a job at some days push the boundaries of the field further make jobs create jobs help people help society solve problems so that should be something you should continuously keep trying to achieve and finally um just a last parting comment i was just thinking about this event and it took me to my first job out of grad school and it was an Intel, and Intel you know, drives you in Andy Grove's mentality, at least when I was there. And Andy Grove used to always say, Andy Grove was an ex CEO of Intel. He would always say, only the paranoid survive in this field. So remember that you're embarking on a career, you have to be the best. It is going to be competitive, but I have faith that your education from bits will put you on a strong footing. But beyond that, it's all your search. And he used to say that. Your career is your business and you are the CEO. So if you want your company to succeed, you need to put in the effort required. So with that, uh, again, thank you, ARC. It's a great step you're taking. And thank you for all the alumni who have taken time to talk to our students. So I look forward to an exciting panel. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful opening address. Despite their busy schedules, we're grateful for the speakers for gracing us with their presence. Some information to be passed on before starting. If you have any questions during the talk, please type them in the Q&A box on your control panel. The speakers will try to address those when they're not speaking, and we also have time for Q&A at the end. On that note, let's get started with the first alumni speaker, Rishav Range. Rishav received his BE degree in ECE from its Hyderabad in 2014. After working for around 2.5 years in Qualcomm India, he then pursued master's in electronics and computer engineering with a specialization in Communication Theory and Systems from University of California, San Diego in 2016. He's currently working at Qualcomm San Diego in the modern systems team. We'd love to know about your journey. Passing the virtual mic over to you, Rishav. Hey, guys. Can you hear me OK? Yeah. Yes, sir. We can hear you. OK, all right. Hello, everyone. So I, uh, I don't know what to add on top of what he just introduced me with. So yeah, I am a student of 2010, 2014. I was in um, EC, uh, Electronics and Communications. So uh, unlike the other two uh, uh, f uh, like colleagues of mine, I mean, uh, friends of mine in the panel, I'm actually not from electronics in specialization. I'm from communications. So maybe I can add a little bit on that side. So uh, I, I can just speak about a little about how my bits journey was and then how it was basically right after that. So uh, till my second year, as uh, professor was saying, uh, people were very much uh, mixed to decide whether they wanted to do something like they wanted to move to CS, they wanted to do coding because that's that's the uh, uh, thing which interests everyone the most. Right. But then um, uh, during my PS, I kind of realized that I like uh, wireless uh, 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 sensor networks, which is not even like the basics of uh, communications, I would say. And then uh, there's this one course called digital signal processing. I'm sure you guys have done it if you're in your second year. That's what kind of uh, sparked the interest in me. I, again, I didn't even know whether that's going to take me to communicate, like that's going to like embark me into this journey of communications. So that was one of the first things which I could realize. I mean, I was not so good in electronics, to be honest. I didn't like VLA. I didn't like ADVD. Those are the core. I think there's still the courses here. So, uh, but but DSP was one thing which kind of was always uh, something which I could understand, which I could perceive, which I could figure out. So I started paying more interest in it. I started, uh, um, um, I would say, doing things on my own on that. And at the same time, Qualcomm came in for internship. And I was like, okay, I didn't know about this company to be very honest. Um, uh, I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna find out what this does. I'm saying then then I realized, okay, this does something in modems. I 
and it's okay if you don't know stuff so i was like okay let me just find out more about this and then i realized ki, okay this is something which i would want to do i would want to see my internship go in this and i really really tried hard for that at that point i cracked the internship i surprised myself and that's when my whole journey of communications actually began um i came back in my third year um uh, i'll speak I, i don't think i want to speak too much about my internship and this i think i'll leave that for the q and a when people ask questions we can actually dive into what we do how it is and all but it was so, okay my internship's conclusion was this that i wanted to get into this i wanted to commit to communications i don't want to try say management or say company uh, computers or electronics for that matter because that was on in my head that should i start refocusing back on electronics or communications but you can take the same thing on the other way like if you are interested in electronics that that's where you start committing maybe so the, that's that's what happened to me i started really paying attention to my cdcs uh, there are certain courses called digicom and um, i would say array processing and other things uh, which if you are in communications you would know so those were the things which i like really really paid attention to and then uh, and 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 you will keep hearing things ki that as professor mentioned like skill sets is what's needed is in industry and all maybe later uh, when uh, three of us will be speaking more about it we can tell you more that that's not it fundamentals is what keeps you growing if you don't have fundamentals you can't really you won't first of all uh, appreciate what you're getting into um, any problem statement that comes here always going to approach that with fundamentals and that's what i've seen in my um, uh, uh, work journey right after undergrad uh, that's what i saw in my grad school um, and right now uh, i think whatever i do uh, i'm damn happy with what i do i'm very very passionate about what i am doing um, and honestly i don't think i would have had it any other way if i uh, and i i don't think i would have liked it Uh, as much as i do if i was in any other um, say career path not that any other career path is not interesting they do they, they, i have I, i have friends who are in cs they've done masters here um i have many other friends in chem uh, they've done phd's and they they are passionate about their work as well but what i want to add is if you are passionate about electronics if you have gone into this field and you know so you you have tasted the uh uh sub i would say you've tasted the subject you know how it is you know it's very challenging but that's what makes it very good because when you know it's challenging um you can commit to it you know that uh, what's there if it's not a challenge you just need to commit to it and then basically you need to start uh putting yourself into it and that's when things start being easy and and uh yeah i think i'm i'm just like speaking randomly so i'm i'm uh, uh, i can just like leave more time for question answers but that's that's what it is i, I would say that it's it's a fee you should uh, in industry um, uh, always back yourself up with fundamentals and move on with skill sets and when you're doing that you basically learn more and then you basically are always approaching uh, any problem statement with your fundamentals that's that's what the whole process is all about and you can it can never get boring and it's always uh, uh, going to keep you engaged so that's what it is yeah uh, that's uh, what i can add to in the start and if there's anything else anushka and simran that i need to add in the beginning you can let me know or else i think i can pass over to the next speaker yeah uh, thank you rishav for sharing your journey with us moving ahead we have our next speaker miss anshula sharma She graduated as a gold medalist from Bits Bilani with a degree in electrical and electronics engineering along with MSc physics. She received the gold medal for best graduating girl student of electrical electronics and instrumentation batch 2015. She later pursued an MS in electronic circuits and systems from the University of California San Diego in 2018. She rejoined the Sensors team of Texas Instruments in 2018 and is currently working on a stealth startup that deals with quantum computing thus giving her a platform to apply her knowledge of both physics and electronics passing the virtual mic over to you Anshula Thanks Simran uh, hi everyone um so uh, I am a dual degree student from Bellani campus um I was always interested in physics um beginning of my you know uh, school years uh, so that was my passion to do something related to that field so i was uh, very clear since the beginning that i had to be like you know physics test triple e at uh, bits 
but when you get into the college, um, you're just trying to juggle up, you know, uh, just getting on your own and, you know, just getting used to the hostel life that's there, then juggling, you know, eight courses with the dual degree that you have. So I wouldn't say it's a very easy task and you will figure out everything within your, you know, second or third third year it's a lot that is going around around you you know in terms of clubs departments socializing juggling your classes doing your own work so it comes um, like it looks to be really hard on the surface but uh, when you you know see your peers and everyone around you everyone's struggling in the same way so that just makes it a bit easier and uh, you you sort of like connect with your friends and your wingies and everyone around you and once you start getting a hold of it, uh, I think that's when, um, you know, you can really focus on, you know, what you might be actually passionate about. So I had done a lot of projects uh, in my physics as well as electronics um, courses regarding, uh, you know, device level and uh, certain board level um, projects. But uh, I think it was still a to and fro sort of a thing, you know, juggling between physics and electronics for me to actually figure out what my actual passion is. So it's completely fine when you are going through this journey in college to, yeah, you know, try and figure out what you are actually, you know, going to be doing for the next, I would say, 40 years in your life. And the one thing that was most important to me was that I should really enjoy what, you know, I, I want to do for the next 40 years. So electronics, uh, as well as physics, I would say are like uh, the two branches or even for any other branch where you really need to enjoy what you're doing. And only then you can be a master of, you know, what you're doing and uh, everyone's going to appreciate your knowledge in it. And these are the, the these core fields are the ones where your experience matters much more you know, then uh, just getting updated with the technology. Sure, you get updated with the new technology that's been coming up, but your experience and your, uh, you know, the knowledge that you gain through your college years is going to be really important. So I would say, like, really focus on the basics. Try and figure out uh, what domain you are interested in. Once you go into the industry, it's uh, it's all, you know, all sorts of jargons are going to be thrown up at you, and it's going to be... Uh, pretty confusing trying to figure out what is going on in terms of an industrial setup but just to get a clear picture of what you would want to do I would say just uh, you know uh, talk to the alumni there talk to various uh, domains uh, the people are uh, working at and the various uh, paths that you can take in your career to move ahead in this uh, field uh, in terms of internships and my masters and, you know, the quantum computing startup that I'm working in currently, I think we should take those questions later on um, just to keep this introduction brief. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your valuable insights, Anshila. Uh, I am a physics dualite myself, so this was really helpful to me as well. Uh, moving ahead, we have our next speaker, Mr. Rohan Garg. Rohan is a 2017 graduate from Bits Goa with a degree in ENI. He's currently working as a silicon architecture engineer at Intel. He's also an expert in memory subsystem CPU SOC with focus on DRAM memory controllers and encryption IPs. We look forward to drawing upon your experiences and gaining valuable insights from you. Over to you, Rohan. Hello. Uh, very good evening, everyone. Am I clearly audible? OK. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, so uh, thanks. thanks for the warm welcome. That was quite an introduction, some really kind words. Thanks for that. Um, uh, this being my first as a guest speaker, you know, I'm, I'm really very happy and proud about getting this opportunity to speak to you all. Right. I, and I, I hope you all are doing good in these tough times and, co you know, coping up with it with all your patience. Uh, I'm pretty sure you, uh, you must be very restless about coming back to the campus. I, I share the same feelings. I, I really wish that uh, we all could have met in person for this event. But you know, here we are with this uh, virtual meet. Nevertheless, it's amazing to be here with you all. Uh, I think uh, a lot has been said about me and my role at Intel. So I'll not talk much there. But yeah, I'll just talk about the journey when I was in college. So like Risha also mentioned, right? When when I was in my second year, 
you know, there were subjects like DD, and then in uh, in uh, two two we got that microprocessor. So I was I just did those subjects. You know, I didn't love those subjects. You know, I just did them over the top. I got a B B minus. I was okay with that. Uh, I really don't. I didn't have that great interest. I'll tell you at what point actually I figured out. Okay, that okay, my interest lies here. You know, I finally found the profile from uh, which I could align my interests. So that was. After the some laboratory projects that I did in three one and three two, so those projects were more practical. Like they were based on Arduino and PSOC, and we created some bot, some fancy bot which does some fancy things. So that is where actually I realized, okay, I think this is a very good domain. It has got a lot of uh, uh, you know things to learn. You have architecture, you have LSI design, a lot of things to learn. So of course, what was lost in the second year, it was. Uh, not too late, of course. I could retract myself and then uh, you know put in the effort and try and learn and prepare for the placements. That was like more of a uh, at a college. You know, if if I talk about the right and if I actually uh, move to the topic of the evening, uh, like electronic industry insights. You know, uh, there's a lot to talk about this. Uh, I was also told that. Uh, um, mainly, you know, most of the students here they are interested in knowing about the different uh, job opportunities that we have in this industry, right? So uh, uh, I think that's a very good ask. It will be really helpful for all these students to know about the different kind of opportunities, you know, as you start preparing going forward. So I also created a, a small presentation, like a couple of slides, you know, to help you understand the different roles and responsibilities better. I'll I'll share that with you as we. Uh, talk about the job opportunities in the next segment. So I will leave it for the later segments. And uh, yes, uh, I also try to you know address the other questions that the most of the students have put up uh, uh, from all my experiences. I'll try to answer that. And if at all, you all could gain some good insights and knowledge out of it. You know, it will be really fruitful for me coming here, right? So uh, I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, Another thing that I would like to talk about is the electronics industry as a whole, right? So, you know, to, to develop their interest, to you know, to motivate you. You know, what I would say is, you know, this industry, you know, it's a very interesting sector in its own, interesting market sector. So, you know, it has it has got uh, it, it is one industry uh, which has gained a lot of attention in recent years, a lot of demand in recent years. It is one industry you know which is gaining more and more demand day by day. So it's a very hot industry, you know, where, where more and more people like to join and you know build their career. It has got a lot of job opportunities, you know, different kind of job opportunities, like from architecture to digital design to physical design, and then you have a whole analog market segment for the elect analog electronics engineers. So you know, it it will give you a range of opportunities, you know, uh, which which will have a lot of variety, and you know, it will give you different flavors in your work. So one thing I will definitely tell you, like you can trust me on that, your job will never become monotonous. You know, week after week, month after month, you know, you will keep learning new things. There are a lot of things to learn in this industry, and along with learnings, the another thing which is very important is uh, the career growth. And it is you can take it for granted. It's like a textbook definition. Your career growth in the electronics industry, it's very good. It's a rapid paced, very fast paced growth, provided. You go inside the industry with a positive attitude, with a positive temperament. You know, you 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 take things with an open mind, right? Everything will fall in place, fall in line, right? Just keep a positive intent, and everything will happen. Uh, for all the, uh, I think for all the students who want to pursue in this field, who have already decided, I think to them it's a very good choice, right? After all, you are all going to be electronics engineers soon, so choosing this field it cannot be wrong at all. So you know, endorse it more. You know, have pride in that. And uh, this is one industry where you will you will do lots of fun. You will, you will gain lots of knowledge. You will deliver for the world. You are basically delivering the chips, the next generation chips. So you are changing the world in a way. So this is for the students. And another thing that I would like to say in the in my introductory remarks is right. Uh, it's, it's one thing that like. As a Bitsian and as an employee from the electronics industry, I would say, you know, you all, all the students you have reached this platform, you have reached Bits Pilani, so it's a certain level, right? So the people outside in the industry, especially the recruiters who will come and, you know, take your interviews, 
they already have a, a fair assumption of your skills of your attitude and uh, i would say uh, of your competitiveness level so in their vision in my vision you all are already young achievers you are all young winners you have reached here let's continue this form right in cricket we say you know this certain batsman is having a good form right you have already scored the centuries you know continue this form go for the world cup win the world cup for yourself right continue your form to achieve your career goals right it's the time it's a very good start very early start uh, people uh, who are in their second year they are finished with their second year and they are going to start with their third years right so it's a very good time for them to start here and uh, i think they will have a good career uh, in this industry a good future here and i think uh, with that i'll conclude my intro uh, introductory intro remarks and thanks a lot for having me here thank you for sharing your story with us rohan now we'll move on to the question and answer segment of this talk these are general questions and you all can answer them you can also address questions in the q and a section in the chat box over okay so the okay the first question is for rohan uh, okay yeah. so i want to ask about the various job opportunities that you mentioned along with the slides uh, can you please yeah, elaborate okay, on that sure. Uh, let's mm. let's start with that. I, I, I'll I'll share the screen and mm. then I can go over it. So yeah, uh, so uh, you know to understand you know the various uh, roles and responsibilities, various job opportunities in this field, right? I'll I'll start with a basic chip, a basic SOC, right? So every chip in this world, right? Whether it is uh, across different companies, across different segments, you know, whether it is a Intel chip or a Qualcomm chip. whether it is a chip from the pc segment or from a mobile segment or from a it is a server chip right the, all the chips in this world they have the same design and development life cycle right and what you see on screen is there are the different stages in this life cycle and for each stage you have a different role and responsibility and and if you you know sum up these roles and responsibilities that is effectively the total opportunities job opportunities that you have within this domain right so i'll quickly start talking about it you know right from the first uh, stage which is a design architecture you know this is something uh, uh, for the seniors there are senior design architects who are 15 years 20 years into this industry they have performed their uh, roles in a lot of domains within this industry and they understand it end to end so their role is to define the specs their role is to define the architecture for the next generation processors and their associated peripherals they will give the micro architecture it is as if uh, as to uh, you know what a particular function block should look like what should be the communication protocols what should be the interfaces on the soc what should be the system fabric so all sorts of details and definitions they will do they will propose new features uh, new features right so it's okay it's definitely not for us it is for the seniors let's come to the second block uh, which is the performance architecture and performance modeling this is precisely my role Uh, uh what i'm doing at intel for last 4 years so you can see it's like a two way communication right you can see a two black arrows so we work closely with the design architects to evaluate the uh, various uh, new performance features their new defined architecture because they have defined it as a high level spec but we have to evaluate on the performance models right so every company in this world who are you know building a soc with lot of ips inside it integrated into it they will have this power and performance team which they will do the power and uh, performance evaluations there is only one requirement you want better power for your ips and you want them to consume uh, sorry better performance and you want them to consume lower power so every ip in this world they have the same goals so you everywhere you will have these teams doing this job for you interesting part of this is uh, you get to work at the highest level of the design and development of a chip that is a uh, very interesting part of this and sometimes it is all all the way reverse right sometimes when you gain too much of exposure as a performance architect you 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 actually suggest a performance booster you know a new feature new architecture feature to the architects so again then it goes for consideration whether it has to be approved or dropped that's a different story but this is the basically the role and what is performance modeling you know performance modeling is right uh, so for every next generation uh, processor you have new features new architecture defined but will that be available in the existing infrastructure to test no your existing infrastructure will be like the, for the previous generation so we have a simulator which only models the 
last generation. For the next generation, we have to add some features to that model so that we can evaluate it. So basically, it's mostly it's a C++ based models across the companies where you write a code for the new feature and you embed it, you integrate it into the structure, into the infrastructure and you run it. So this is something, this is again a very hot topic these days. You know, it has seen a lot of demand performance architecture teams. So if I show you the roles, the roles will be called out with these names, Silicon Architecture Engineer or a Performance Architect or a PNP Engineer. So whenever you come across these roles, you can, you know, you have a fair assumption now, right? What is the roles and responsibilities within that role? So you can uh, 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 get that. And then let's move to the next segment, right? So the next segment is the RTL coding. RTL is nothing but the register level uh, coding that you do. So for this micro architecture design, first we have done the modeling in C++ to evaluate. And then for the same micro architecture design, now you're doing the RTL coding. So RTL coding is nothing at, at register level, you do all sorts of things. I think a glimpse of that we have already seen in digital design, where you have written a simple RTL code for a simple design. You have written a test bench to code that, uh, to check that code, right? So. Uh, so basically that is the RTL coding and the functional verification. So you write the RTL code, you write a test bench for it to functionally verify it. There is another verification called the performance verification. So how, what you do here, basically you, you do a more uh, dynamic testing here. So to check that the RTL code, which is uh, modeling the micro architecture, is it meeting the requirements or not? For example, uh, on, your, on your SOC, you have a design, you want 100 GBPS of bandwidth end to end. Like from the, from your core to your RAM, you want to see a particular bandwidth. You are achieving it or not? You are you want to see a round trip latency of 200 nanoseconds, right? Uh, so you are achieving it or not? So if you are seeing a higher latency, that means there will be a delay. There's a flaw in your design. So ultimately, users will be unhappy. So all those these sorts of testings you have to done in this development phase, right? So from architecture design to this functional verification, these all roles are categorized under the front end job profiles of a uh, design engineer, electronics design engineer, right? And let me talk about the uh, roles, the names of the roles for the RTL. You, may, you will be called a digital design engineer. You will be ha working verification roles, validation roles, design for tests. So all sorts of these roles and responsibilities, and uh, you, you will be just uh, doing that if you are working here. And now we start with the orange blocks. So this is the starting of the physical design, or you can say it's a backend category of the chip development. So what happens? Uh, what is chip? A chip is basically a piece of silicon, right? So in that silicon, neither this performance model will go. It's a C++ model, right? It cannot go into a silicon. Neither this RTL will go. It's just at a register level. So you, what you want in a chip, you want actual gate level implementation. You will be actually having lot of combination logic, you know, and or nor gates registers, clock, all sorts of things you are having, right? So from this RTL, what is, it resembles a design. And from this RTL, you will construct a gate level implementation. So what you will do is you will just input that into a tool and it will generate the gate level implementation. So that is precisely your physical design phase. Once you have the gate level implementation, you will do a placement and routing. So all these topics, I think you will be learning in your third year in ADVD and other subjects. Placement and routing is like, uh, finally, a layout will be generated. You know, uh, there will be the placement of clock, placement of reset, placement of all the logics. So that will be done. And finally, after the layout is ready, you will do a verification that uh, your layout is, you know, functionally correct and not. You will do some timing analysis. You know, for each path in the layout, you know, you, you will test them for the timing. You know, if the timing is not wrong, you don't want delays. You don't want a bug to appear when the actual silicon is ready, right? So all those roles you perform. So what are the roles here? So you will be called a physical design engineer here, or you will, call, you will be called a component design engineer. These are the most common profiles you will be offered from most of the companies like Intel or Texas, right? And you will have to do some post layout verification and all. So these are the roles here in the physical design. And then after that, we are left with two stages. Fabrication is one, it's not done in India, but fabrication is not for the industrial manufacturing, it's for generating the prototype. So once you generate the prototype, you know, you will be sending it to the labs. Then again, a rigorous testing will be done. And in the labs also, there's no specific job. You know, you will have all sorts of engineers. You will have the software guys to, you know, load the OS on your silicon. You will have the design, digital design engineers, you have the physical design engineers to check the silicon. So all sorts of uh, engineers you will have. And then again, you do a validation. So that is pretty much it from the overall roles. 
if i talk about my role performance i i say end to end performance why because i have to work with the design architectures architects at the beginning of the design i have to work with the ideal guys for the verification i have to work with the post silicon guys for the validation so i am from the for the entire life cycle of uh, the chip i am actually involved in the performance so that is why it's a uh, end to end uh, work it gives you more visibility it 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 gives you more visibility in the organization and you tend to learn a lot of more things so that's why it's a very hot topic this year yeah so that's pretty much it yeah thanks thank you rohan um so the next question is for anshula as we all know that you have been a gold medalist did you choose electronics engineering due to interest or was it simply a case of cutoffs uh no so like i said in my introduction it wasn't a case of cutoffs for me so i had a difficult time choosing between you know computer science and electronics because everybody around you is mostly going with computer science but for me it was purely uh, my interest and i wanted to do more of device level physics accompanied with uh, you know device level electronics so it was a combination of both that led to this choice yeah i, I would say it was a pretty difficult choice because you know you keep on hearing from what your peers say and what your seniors tell you like you know it's going to be a way more challenging and difficult but i think in the end uh, you should stick with your interest um, and that's what has helped me throughout my career i would say okay thank you rishab thank you anshula uh, rishab what's your take on this pretty similar to what anshula just mentioned uh, to be honest uh, when i was applying um, uh, people were actually um, very interested in mechanical as well that was one of the fields which uh, i mean if you are a uh, 12th standard student right and you're basically putting out your list you don't have a good insight on what the field holds so mechanical was one of those things which everyone wanted it hey i want to do that so that was one thing going on and obviously cs i think everyone knows that okay this is a good field you want to like go there you get a lot of money and everything so for me it uh, i honestly wasn't so interested in mechanical that was based out of the uh, subject itself you kind of get an understanding of the scope of the subject you know that this is not something you're interested in but uh, um uh, i was tied up between computer science for sure because of obviously the uh, things that the field brings and uh, communications as such like com communications not being communications because i didn't have a clear idea about that i wanted to do something in the field of physics but um, uh, more on the engineering side of it so i had the interest of ec so it was till the last moment where i was really juggling between both um it honestly wasn't cut offs for sure uh, i know that for a fact because uh till the very end i was really taking a call till the second or third iteration whether i want to uh make a change if i can or not but um yeah from right from the start i knew that um i i was inclined towards uh, ece for that matter um yeah you get more uh, understanding of the field later because obviously you can't expect a student who is just getting into the field to know everything about it but yeah inclination is something which you can kind of build based on your 11th and 12th um, uh, as such so that's that's what happened in my case as well um yeah rohan would you like to share your thoughts on this yeah i can just repeat the question i kind of lost it <laughs> listening yeah. uh, okay so uh, were you interested in electronics or was it just mm -hmm. about your cutoffs no no yeah for me i was always interested in getting electronics whether i'm going to enjoy it or not it was not the story at time but yeah so frankly speaking i didn't even fill the computer science option at the top my first option was electronics so yeah that's pretty much it i was sure that i have to do engineering but yeah hmm. it is a cut off which got me electronics hmm. Hmm. okay so the next question what is the typical career trajectory of an individual in your industry Rishab, would you like to answer this? Um, yeah, actually, can you like? Do you want something very specific about that? Because the career trajectory can go in quite a lot of fronts. Thing is, um, if if you want to just enter industry right after uh, your undergrad, right, that takes you through a trajectory. It's a very interesting one. It takes you through one particular trajectory. You have different roles that you can come in. 
um like uh, actually I'll, i'll try keeping it a little uh, around electronics because i'm not directly from electronics but as rohan mentioned right like all the fields that you are in um even in communications you work very close to that we work on a modem chip uh that's that's what our roles are also so uh, but but what happens to us is our work starts post silicon uh when uh, from the hardware guys when they basically come up with their uh, uh, uh specs and their uh, uh, um, uh, requirements they have their own uh, chip design it's taped out that's when basically the modem design kind of starts filling in so it's all hand in hand with everything and uh, i think uh, rohan did a very fabulous job of explaining what all roles are there and and uh, he also explained how it is for post undergrad what all roles are kind of applicable to you right so similar is the case when it comes to uh, the industry's other uh, uh, um, i would say roles for example even communication engineer they kind of follow the same life cycle they have the same kind of roles you have design you have um, dev uh, uh, which is embedded development and then you have uh, obviously performance uh, validation and testing which is again on the modem level that is it's not the uh, uh, it's not the chip related hardware modeling or performance validation but this is more like uh, what you do with uh, the system design in communications field so you have a whole uh, different uh, scope for that so you can fit in in any of the roles that and as i mentioned development uh, embedded dev right that that's basically something which uh, in my field people consider that to be closer to say uh, um, uh, coding and computers but then again it's not really that it's you need to have a solid understanding of electronics to actually be an embedded embedded coding is very different from or embedded development is very different from normal uh, 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 cs roles which other people do so these are usually what you can like of these three what i uh, talked about uh, design and systems is something uh, in my uh, world it's like the architecture role that uh, rohan was mentioning so for that you need to have um, i mean it's 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 usually a phd and masters level uh, uh, entry that you get so you need to have a much more in depth understanding it's not really about degrees it's about the knowledge that you need to hold in order to really go and make a difference there in order to contribute to that so that's the part of it but um, the dev uh, the embedded dev part and the performance validation and the system uh, testing these are things which are uh, uh, completely open to like undergrads for them to like uh, 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 venture into so that's that's how it is so my field basically kind of divides into these three segregations and uh, uh, you basically need uh, uh, expertise accordingly to get, kind of get into that okay that's great next question is for anshula what are some of the must have skills to succeed in your field um so i am in uh, analog domain of this industry so it's more uh, towards transistor level design that we do it's basically the specifications in the design architecture uh, domain which rohan mentioned earlier uh, so with me uh, i think uh, bits provides us with the ps program and uh, i think that was very beneficial to me since uh, i had uh, you know ps option for both semesters and i was able to pursue my internship at texas instruments and uh, i got lucky with one of my semesters to pursue uh, you know the design architecture aspect of it so in terms of in industry and the exposure that is required and the technical expertise i would say uh, it's already has the you know the cadence software that would be a must i think for my domain uh, you will have a upper hand in terms of other colleges because you already know the software um i would say advd analog electronics digital design compact these are the you know some of the major courses that you generally uh, do and the basics from that those would be like the building blocks even in the industry so once you enter the industry you will have some sort of training regarding the softwares and the tools that uh, every individual company employs uh because uh, it's not uh, same throughout but uh, i would say like just uh, getting your facts straight about uh, you know these courses uh, or which domain you want to get into is it going to be analog or is it going to be digital 
people uh and as rohan and uh, jo mentioned that uh, uh, so undergrads generally uh, not get the architecture domain of the field initially so it's mostly going to be you know post production when the chip comes back it's going to be testing or validating it on bench or uh, you know looking at the failure analysis of the chip or doing some sort of verification using uh, coding and stuff so in those perspectives i think uh, you know verilog and verilog ams and those sort of things quite will come in ha- handy and if you have done projects on board level that would be a you know a plus point once you enter the industry so these are typically some skill sets based on which domain you get and as a g- undergrad i don't think you have much of a i would say freedom to move around in the initial few months uh, because uh, they generally hire based on the you know openings in the team or uh, you know which team you interview for even you are not quite sure about it so uh, like just be uh, open to exploring once you enter the industry try communicating within the team just see what role suits you better and you know learn about the roles that are present in the sister teams across uh, you know around your team and uh, get to know you know more and more domains that the industry offers with your uh, you know uh, suited uh, skill set uh, i think keeping a open perspective would be a really important thing once you enter the industry because it offers a huge variety of domains that are present from embedded analog digital to all sorts of domains that are currently coming up so keeping an open mind and just focusing on these core courses would be pretty helpful thank you uh, okay so the next question what excites you most about your chosen subfield uh, rohan would you like to say more about this yes. <laughs> if i if i talk about uh, my subfield i think uh, the the most fascinating thing is the fact that i get to work at the highest level of chip development uh, i mean in the design phase i am uh, it has given me a lot of exposure over these 3 4 3 3 and a half years i have learned a lot and uh, another important thing is since because it's the early phase you know i get a lot of time to spend on each of the generation and learn the architecture end to end okay um Rishav, uh, you mentioned that you liked electronics after your internship. Would you like to tell more about your internship here? Okay, yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. my internship was in uh, uh, Qualcomm. Uh, in my th- uh, when was it? It was in the third year summer, like after the mm-hmm. end of third year summer. But um, uh, we kind of got our internship tests and everything done in three one. So I kind of started reading about Qualcomm, what it does, uh, how I would want my um, cdc's to better work for me in um, uh, the industry in, in my internship itself um uh, but when i actually went to uh, the internship what you realize is the the whole thing is very different i mean they are obviously it's it's a tech company it's based out of your fundamentals again but then what they do on is finally a built up on a lot of levels so the work which happens and you being a very small module a very small part of it it's it's not the whole picture right so my whole internship really went in trying to understand what's the holistic picture of what i'm trying to do i mean uh, i have a problem that is i don't really function in my full pace till i understand what the whole picture is so the two and a half months of my internship really went in that i can't speak about the project it's uh, I, i don't think any of us if you ask us very much in detail what do we do exactly we might not be able to say but the thing is even in internship it's like some some things are very confidential so you cannot really speak about that but my internship was on embedded front in the uh, modem side so it my uh, I, i was tagging along with another uh, um, um, intern from nit trichy and both of us were working on something embedded he was from the electronic side of it i was from the com side of it so we basically were uh, doing something on protocol level um, uh, to define something but the the final objective of that at least what our managers told us was this that see if you can understand two and a half months is very less to understand something but if you can understand based on what you have learned if you understand the holistic picture of what it is that's what you're trying to do so for me it was basically trying to map what i did with uh, i mean what i studied with what i'm doing 
um and honestly it was a very interesting experience it was very different because you think that you'll learn something and you'll come and apply it that's not how it works you learn and you wait for a lot of time you learn a lot you do a lot of digging and that's when you start realizing where it is applied exactly and that's what is interesting because even after 2 years i say 4 years of my work uh, that's when i start realizing oh now it's getting applied <laughs> and by that time you're like lost on your subject you have to again go back and start studying so it's always that it's always a back and forth you study for what you want to apply but then by the time it comes to apply then again you have to study so that's that's basically how the whole cycle goes on and that was the case for internship job and everything i would say okay that's great thanks rishab uh, for the next question is it necessary to pursue higher education to rise higher in this industry anshula you can go on first um okay uh, so it's i wouldn't say it's a necessity it's more about uh, where you want to specialize um so in higher education uh, like you will have a lot of domains you can go into wireless you can you know stay in analog then uh, you csd was known for its biomedical ic design so it's mostly low power you know biomedical uh, sort of uh, chips that they are planning to um, you know do with implantable sensors and humans and those sort of you know very high level things that are not yet in the industry uh, production right now so i wouldn't say it's a necessity it's more about your interest uh in terms of uh, i would say the work that i did back in texas instruments india and then texas instruments in us it was quite similar um it's just uh, uh i'm not uh, i mean you have much more in depth knowledge once you have masters in a particular domain uh but in terms of industry uh i wouldn't say you will be able to correlate 100% with what you specialize in i think what rishav said it's going to be like you will learn something you will apply maybe you know 30 or 40% of it and then you will build up on those uh concepts based on what company you are working in so each company will have its own specialized uh you know product line that you will be working for so it's not going to be a 100% implementation of what you do in your masters but uh, having a masters would definitely help you with going to towards more in depth architecture or specification related roles is what i have seen uh particularly in us okay at what stage did you realize that you need further training uh so for me it was uh, completely different because uh, i was doing design uh, related uh, you know job job role back in india and even in us i was planning to do the same it was more towards uh, changing of fields uh, so i wanted to pursue my higher education on the biomedical lines uh, and we have like very little exposure to biomedical chip design here uh, in our coursework so for me that was purely the motivation to go ahead and do a masters um, but from what i have seen with the new st- incoming students uh, like it's most they just you know go and get done with the masters or you know whichever field has more number of job opportunities um i would say like this approach is uh, might look fine to you right now but uh, pursuing the next 40 years in the industry with this mindset might become quite difficult if we just go ahead and do a masters because everybody else is doing it or you know if we just plan to uh, just move to us i would say yeah that's one necessity in our field because we uh, it's not easily transferable from india to us in electronics domain but uh, i would say be sure of you know what you want to pursue even then because uh, it gets a bit uh, complicated and redundant if you don't enjoy what you are doing like you will stop uh, innovating after a certain point and it won't make much sense so it's purely based on your interest and where you see yourself in um future as in do you want to go in you know a more higher tech ladder or do you want to go towards a 
more sort of a applications on a marketing role and uh, where do these companies have those prospects better is it going to be in india is it going to be in us or is it going to be in any in some other part of the world so uh, you you would take some time to figure out like where you would eventually want to land up but uh, i would say just explore your options before you finalize on you know investing so much um by coming to us yeah Rishav, you've also done MS. Would you like to elaborate on this? Sorry, I was kind of answering the question in the chat, but uh, okay. I was listening to Anshula, and um, I'll add one thing. Um, and I think Anshula will relate to it because she's from UCSD as well. So uh, when I came to UCSD, I mean, I was kind of sure. Uh, okay, my uh, I know many people want to kind of get, know that. See, for a particular job opportunity or for a particular role, you need to um, do a higher studies. That's that's kind of understood that okay that also needs that if you want that particular role you will have to do something like that you'll have to actually do a phd even masters doesn't suffice at times that's fine and if you really want that you can do that that's completely okay but uh, there are also reasons like sometimes you're not really happy or you're not really satisfied with what you've learned and and that's just an honest thing that okay i want to learn more and a lot of phd students are kind of like um, uh, i would say instigated by that they know that they want to do more they want to do some more research they have already done some they want to do more that's that's basically it and so people do come to do masters with that um, uh, um, uh, objective as well people come to do masters thinking that they will uh, get a good opportunity and then they realize what really research stands for and then they convert to phds so that's also another thing so you really cannot decide at any point of time that this is what you want i mean it's always a constant thought in your head you really understand even for me i honestly started uh, preparing for gre and everything in my fourth year even though i was not very certain i wanted to do a masters that's why i couldn't go uh, for masters right away after my fourth year i thought i was always an industry guy i joined the industry i thought that okay skill sets really is good enough with the knowledge that you hold um and it was actually true for the job that i was doing i was very happy with what i was doing but there was something always where i was like i don't think i have learned enough for me to apply i started going back to my subjects to think that maybe i didn't study enough or maybe i didn't uh, uh, focus on something but that was not it i realized that there's much more to the subject um and honestly speaking it wasn't a like you, you you know when you have a problem and you can't solve it and you have the assignment deadline the next day and you're basically hitting your head and that's how you feel you feel very unsatisfied you can get those feelings even after your uh, undergrad i mean even if you have done like in your convocation you're so happy and everything but at the end of it you do feel at times that you want to learn more that's what kind of pushed me that okay fine i think i need to quit and go for my masters and that was really the reason why i did that um but when i came here i saw a lot of people who came here because they wanted different job opportunities they actually joined communications to be honest it's called cts and ucst but when they actually came here then they realized that they don't like communications in that way because ucsd cts communication theory and systems is very theoretical and they found interest in other fields uh, and by that i don't mean other fields doesn't like something different in a different branch they actually started liking circuits and uh, signals so that, i think uh, anshula you're from ecs right uh, electronics yeah. yeah so that is a field my uh, roommate right now who is um, in uh, qualcomm as well he was a core cts student he actually graduated with cts but he did a lot of courses in uh, electronic circuits and uh, uh, signals because that's what interested him so Uh, he comes here or anyone else for that matter i saw a lot of goa students or my juniors who kind of came in they come to cts then they realize that they want to do something else and by something else that is specialization it's it's all about learning if you want to learn you just learn so you just go for that you do that and when you basically are happy with it that's when you start you realize what you want to do next so the career part or career trajectory can change at any point of time it's just that if you really like something commit to it and do it and it can be out right after undergrad you can commit to it and you can actually reach great lens or you can just study more and you can do that or sometimes you're like you know what i'm just for phd like just for doing research it's it's just an instinct you just follow it and it, it, and and never regret if you have like taken a decision always stand by it because give good thought to it uh think about it think about what you want and just commit to it and 
I don't think any of the people that I know of who have changed lines or changed anything are unhappy. They're actually very happy with what they're doing. So I, I can only take that from them and tell you guys that, you know what, anything is fine. You might not even know where you'll end up 10 years from now. Just make sure you give an honest effort and you would be good. Yeah. Thank you, Ishav. So the next question is for Rohan. Uh, Rohan, since you, are, you have graduated the most recently here, Looking back, how should an undergraduate student in the second year plan his third year in bits so that they can enter your field better prepared than you were? Yeah, I think uh, third year, as I mentioned earlier, also it's a very good time to start. And you can, the, in the vacation gap between the two, second year and third year, you can always plan things better there. So it's just focus on the basics, right? If any, um, loophole is left in the previous courses of second year for example in digital design you're not satisfied with your progress with your learnings uh, for example the microprocessors you know just go through it uh, you know you should be thorough with that uh, start uh, working on your coding skills you know basics are okay if you are if you know more than basics that will be really beneficial for you i was very you know i was lower than basics in p plus plus but in the industry then i have to ramp up quickly to survive Otherwise, you will face a lot of problems. So just work on the basics of electronics, VLSI design, uh, VLSI architecture, start reading more materials. And I think uh, I should mention that uh, the placement team, they, they maintain a very good material on one of the portals. I don't remember, it's called FTP, I think. FTP portal is there, right? So they maintain very good uh, preparatory materials for your uh, uh, placements. Right, so there are two online video lecture series. They are, one is on VLSI design, one is on VLSI architecture. Third year is the time, you know, when the students can pick it up and go through it, you know, slide by slide, make notes, prepare well, make as if you are going for an interview. So you will be ready with it. Uh, when, when the actual companies come for internships or for the interview or for the jobs, you will be ready with that. Okay, thank you, Rohan. Um, next question is, after spending a few years in engineering, do you plan to continue on a management track or a research track and why so? Rohan, you can go on first. Okay, so uh, I would choose a management track because I'm not too much into the research type, right? Uh, so down the career, like seven years, eight years down, uh, we have we we have two options like whether you can excel in the technical field like as, as an individual contributor or you can uh, go into the management line where of course you can still do some technical stuff but 50 percentage of the time you will be spending in the management role right so i will prefer that because that will give you uh, a different flavor at your workplace you can spend half of time in technical and other management stuff so that is like my thought personally, what we should do, I think I, sh I shouldn't answer that. Everybody should decide on its own. Thank you, Rohan. So the next question, uh, what is the one thing that you miss about bits? Anshila, would you like to go? It's a very harsh, harsh question. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know if I can just name uh, one thing. How much, how much time do you guys have? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We like to hear from I, all three of you about this. Yeah, I think okay. like the best uh, part about bits would be the social interaction. Uh, that's one thing that I miss like way too much here in US, especially because when I was in India uh, back in Bangalore days when I was working, uh, my entire batch from bits was like came from you know all three campuses to like Bangalore. That's where like most of the people are there. So you still feel at home because I feel like once you get out of home, I think that's the first place where your friends are, your family. So I think that's the part that I miss a lot. Like you are, you know, having uh, all your meals together, you know, suffering together with the CDCs and your electives and, you know, <laughs> trying to, you know, get up in the morning when it's like, minus two degrees in Palani and then during the summer season as well. So when it's like 50 degrees, but I think just uh, doing it all together 
with you know your group of people who are your family there once you step out of home in those initial days is what makes it completely worth it and i could still say like looking back 10 years it's been 10 years since i moved to kalani for the first time i would still say those would be the best four years of my life till now so yeah i would say completely the social interaction and the friends i've made there who have just stayed along throughout this journey rishab would you like to say something yeah so like anshula mentioned it's been 10 years for for me it's been 15 years now uh, since i stepped into bits and to be honest um, i'm still in touch not touch i'm actually like we have video calls every uh, sunday my my gang of friends and, and uh, the, the most i miss is my group of friends i mean uh, i don't think any of them will see this video or see this uh, in because everyone is super busy and everything but uh, i really miss them a lot and uh, we spent i think of the four years uh, i mean time wise we spent all the four years together uh, like going for um, meals together trying to do assignments together one day before you realize that oh man this is the syllabus of the course and then you need to start studying uh, and um, in my group there was only one guy from electronics and everyone else was from everything else we had uh, i don't know if you guys know this this bra- there was this branch called information systems then um, is and i think um, Rohan and Anshula would know them because they would have been one of the last batches to yeah. see IS, right? Exactly. So in my group, there were five of them from IS, and uh, and I didn't know anything about their courses. They didn't know anything about that. But you all are like sitting in the same room and studying. Like no one knows what we are doing. We are doing our own stuff. But that's how you would want to spend. I never spent it in my room. I mean, for the four years, I was not in my room. So. but that's that's how bits is and because after that i have been for two and a half years in an in industry uh came for masters where i spent a good one and a half years uh, and again it's it's a similar setup like bits right because you're far away from home far away from friends uh making new friends there again and then right after four years in industry i don't think i've had a group or had uh the kind of life that bits gave me so I, and i think the that answer would be the same for everyone attending the session also like right after i mean i do understand you guys are going through the uh, covid situation uh, the whole online thing kind of makes it hard for you to like come and um, uh, see each other really feel what we are talking about but i honestly hope you guys do get to uh, like uh, see that have that because even one year of bits like the way you spend it the feeling that you get i think that's good enough for you to like realize that that's the best thing that you can have in a long time right after leaving home because after 12th is when you basically really step out and i think that's the first experience that you get so yeah i i just i think uh, reciprocated what or or just resonated what anshula mentioned but yeah i think that's the same feeling that i have rohan what about you yeah you are asking a bit slow as you're in now so you you know that so i think uh uh the four years they were just tremendous uh, i miss each and everything about bits goa each and everything uh, i can name all the things every second so it's basically the college life and i very well understand that those four years cannot be replaced and they, they, those were the four golden years of my life and what a place it is you know what a place to have a bits campus so it was like uh, living in a heaven so yeah and i'll tell you one interesting story right uh, i did my ps in 42 i was in bangalore and in those 6 months of ps i visited campus eight times from goa every month i was coming once at least to the campus and even after joining intel at bangalore i tried to you know visit goa and visit my campus at least uh, two to three times a year but thanks to this covid has spoiled everything i really very upset like you guys yeah, so hope things get better I'll actually add one thing to that. Um, uh, my friends in India, they still go and visit the campus. No one knows them, uh, but he, people. I, I know people. A lot of my juniors, so they just keep going to campus. They see that, they feel it, and they come back. And uh, some people find it silly that hey, why are you doing this, man? You guys are like, I mean, the colleagues and all, right? But you, you know what you want to feel when you go there. And yeah, I think you guys will also do the same, like how Rohan mentioned. Yeah. I must I must say there's a tendency even after 25 years. 
the feeling of going back to campus for four years are always the fondest memories one has. Even after 25 years, I still am in touch with my Vinkies, my Sandies, and everything. And both Bhavan always strikes a chord with me. So. Okay, lastly, uh, what is one piece of advice you would like to give to a student who wants to pursue a career in core electronics engineering? Um, Anshula, you can go on first. Um, I would say just uh, focus on your uh, basics for now. The CDC courses that are planned for electronics are bit are quite important and uh, make sure uh, you try and understand at least i would say maybe 60 percent of it i think that's also that also is an overreach from what i can recall in my years it it would have been around 30 35 percent but uh, it really helps you to understand the industry aspect uh, you know once you enter the industry and you are uh, there in that environment, uh, just your basics will help you to build up a lot faster. And uh, uh, yeah, I would say just uh, enter with an open mind and not with a very, uh, you know, very, very focused sort of a, a goal set because, uh, you know, the industry is changing very fast right now. So just what you think, um, you know, in an educational background might not apply in the practical scenario. So don't be disheartened if you don't get the exact, uh, you know, match between your thoughts and your practical experience. But uh, yeah, just be go with an open mind and concentrate on your basics for now. Thank you, Anshula. Risha, your take on this? Um, uh, I have a little uh, different take on this one, like a different thing to talk about. Uh, so uh, when you get into industry, right? So first thing, what you need to know is if you are in bits, as I think Rohan mentioned earlier, if you're in bits, you have a certain standard because you are smart, you are good, you have come here. Take note of that. You should know that. And I think you realize that later. But uh, the harsh truth is also this, that uh, there are people who are not in bits and they are aware of that as well. So they really dedicatedly prepare for it for their four years. You should take note of that as well. What we take lightly at times is we that, hey, we are from bits, we are good. And we kind of fall short on our efforts sometimes uh, uh, in, in, the, in the four years. I mean, you do learn a lot, you're smart, so you do learn a lot and you do apply that when you go later. But uh, if you really need to contribute to the industry, and you have you you will realize that yes what at the end of it it's not about you earning money or you doing something it's really about contributing right so you have to start the process right from uh, your your engineering you have to really um, be dedicated you really need to start uh, learning properly so that when you actually in an industry you can apply your smarts with your meticulousness that's one thing i mean i don't know if it's coming out clear uh, the way I'm putting it, because I understand a lot of you guys are in your second year and third year don't really have the complete insight on that. But uh, there are people whom you'll be really, really impressed with where they, they might not be as smart as you, but they really have uh, put their hard work in there. So you can see them achieving great heights. You can see your mentors and all doing really, really good. And then you'll be like, okay, I should have put more hard work. So you need to start your learning process right from engineering. and. Uh, I, I think all of us have been saying this, right? That uh, even in industry, it's a learning process. So what you're really trying to do is not learn, like not gain subject knowledge, but actually try learning the correct learning process. The process of being confident, the process of getting a new problem statement, how you do it, that whole process, the abstract process is what you learn in bits, uh, both technically and non-technically. Personality-wise, I think everyone kind of becomes confident, but it's technically being confident. If someone asks you something, and if you don't know, it's fine. You need to be confident about that as well. If someone asks you something and it's fundamental, you should be confident if you know it. You should have that in yourself that I know this and I'll do that. So it's it's more about that. I think that's, I've seen a lot of uh, juniors whom I've interviewed and other people who keep coming in. Uh, they sometimes lack that. They're very good, but they lack that confidence. Um, over the time, they do gain that. But I think it's a good time for four years that you build that up as well because you to go through a lot of things which can help you build that. So that's one thing which I would want to tell you guys that you have time, you have the runway right now, focus on that as well. Uh, don't, uh, 
it's not about cg it's not about all those it's about if you complete a subject you should be able to confidently say that i have done 30 or 40 percentage that's actually more than enough uh, to to maybe bank a job or to like get something uh, going for you guys so yeah okay thank you rishab rohan what advice would you like to give us yeah yeah i'll give a set of advices like quickly i'll just tell that um so when you start preparing in your third year right of course you need to be well versed and you have to put in the efforts what you need also need to do is you know start talking to your seniors seniors you know who have already prepared for it who are already in the process of giving the interviews or who have recently you know they have entered the industry so you know keep asking them questions keep bugging them and you know talk to them continuously you know you have doubts ask them you know how to answer if you are in a certain situation in an interview you know how to get out of it so prepare it fully like the way you used to prepare in your plus 2 when you are preparing for your entrance examination you know put in all the effort just because you have come in bits that's what i told right and what rishav has said you 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 can take light in other places don't take light here right you know go full on go head on and another advice is what with what i may telling earlier right i i discuss a lot of job opportunities across Uh, like different domains so uh, definitely i think after going through that you will definitely be able to you know uh, uh, find your uh, like a matching role that matches with your interests that is like a your, like your dream job role or a dream profile but having done that you know don't reject the other opportunities that are coming your way right remember this electronics market it's a very niche market it's a very compact market in its own you know it's not like a it market you know where you have lots of tons of id jobs it's not like a non technical where analytics data science it is a very compact market so don't reject the opportunities right because getting into the industry is more important for me you all get into the industry that is more important you don't get your dream profile it's fine of one year down the line two years down the line no power in the world can stop you from you making a lateral move right so you know take the right decisions at the right time be positive throughout the preparations and you know think smartly thank you rohan that was very helpful and thank you all the speakers for your take on all these questions we will now be taking up questions that were filled by students in the google form and first question is for rishav um, i am currently working with sandisk india and i am exploring if it's a wise decision to try abroad in the same industry since you have an exposure to the semiconductor industry outside india i would like to know the comparison between industry there versus domestic okay uh so uh so so i think the question is about you trying like you working in india and then making a switch to um, uh say some some country abroad and then basically trying to do that right versus trying to come here because you're doing higher studies and then getting into a job um the thing is it is not really about the company i mean i think once you're already into uh, uh, the industry you kind of know which way you are kind of landing what kind of job you're going into so the question really becomes about what profile are you working in and for what are you really doing that um i will keep the money part aside i mean obviously if you're moving out or something like that right according to whatever the country's uh, 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 whole economy is you basically will be getting more or less accordingly like that's one thing and i mean that can be lucrative and also i'm going to keep that aside i don't think the question is based out of that right it's really based out of what kind of job opportunities do you have um there is one uh, uh, approach to it that is that you know that the work that you're doing the kind of profile that you're in you really like it so uh, and and if you're going to have a similar kind of profile there then i don't see why that kind of makes you switch because why would you want to do that you would want to stay in your country you would want to do what you're doing right uh, but there is another take to it that uh, being in like in qualcom i know there are certain profiles which are only accessible to um, uh, people say here in uh, us okay and it's it's not something which is biased against you or something it's really that the company is based out of us i mean obviously they'll have all their smarts and all their brains sitting here um there is also another take on it like for example because the company's headquarters is at a certain place the major work will happen there because it's accessible for them so a lot of good projects even though you're from the same team can actually happen in a place where the headquarters is based out of uh the bad part for india is that um, not a lot of these multinational core companies are based out of india but 
but what has happened over the last 15 years which we have realized is this uh, uh, disparity was a lot earlier it has now been kind of like reducing a lot because people have realized that uh, people from india have potential i mean obviously because of the kind of work that people do right now in india as well so a lot of um, uh, abroad projects are actually flowing back in india as well um i'm what i'm trying to say is that uh, it's it's finally about the profile so if you already see that there are good projects and profiles coming down to you right you don't really have to make that switch um you have a good lifestyle in india you have a good work culture also kind of building up i mean i would not have said that say 5 10 years ago uh, uh but but now i i know a lot of people really uh, uh liking the culture back in india the way it works uh and there then there is really no purpose you trying to ch- just switch out because oh it's a new country and you want to just enjoy like uh, how how it's different from you like everyone wants a new experience right so that's that's really not uh, something that you would want to do i think you should keep your priorities right uh, look for the profile look for what you want to do if you're not really finding it then do that i mean that that's completely justified but just don't do it because it's like a different location and everything because what we all realize after coming here is you sacrifice a lot uh, it's not such a simple plane uh, oh amazing i'm in us and everything it doesn't work that way i mean every morning you wake up you don't have your parents around you don't have your friends around you it, it takes a toll on you as well so it's it's a big decision to take uh, if you are doing it without uh, a real priority at uh, in your head thanks rishabh uh, the next question is for anshula does it imply that if i like properly course work i would like working in the industry too okay that's a completely individual perspective um i would say triple e coursework itself is like very you know very broad you have power power systems power electronics then you have analog then you have digital then you have computer architecture side of it so it's like you know they are trying to sum up all aspects of the industry into your coursework and it really depends on what you actually like amongst this coursework and what you actually get to do in the industry so i wouldn't say it's a you know one to one translation to you know what subject you like and to what job you get in the electronics industry but uh, if you sort of like correlate what you like even like 20% with what you do i i think you would enjoy it because i have enjoyed uh, you know uh, my coursework with ADVD, analog electronics, and you know electronic devices, and that's what has translated into my job role. So it's been related to those two things have been related. So it translated somewhat, but I wouldn't say it would be a direct translation. Okay, we also have a sub part sub part for this question. Uh, this is for you, Anshula. I have taken up formal slash informal SOPs, but I don't know if the work done in the industry is necessarily similar. If you could shed some light on this. Um. Yeah. So the work done in the industry um would not be very similar because the SOPs that we do are majorly related to the research that's been going on, and it's not uh something that is. in like mass production you know for consumer goods that are being done at a industrial level so what you do in your research projects might not be what you see in the industries because um, if i give an example i did a lot of projects on carbon nanotubes and uh, when you get into the industry aspect of it you don't do much of that so uh, no you won't see a direct correlation with what you do in your research to what is being done in the industry unless you go into the research and development department of the industry so yeah thanks anshila rohan since you said you will move towards the management side of things do you see yourself starting something on your own in the next few years in the in this field any advice for the ones unsure if they want to pursue core or a start Right, I think it's totally up to the individual. You know, I, I don't want to advise here. 
because but if, if i if i have to answer this i won't do that because you know i have never uh, no i've not liked that concept okay and uh, i'm not that type basically who, who will work for a startup and all those things but yeah it's totally up to the individual okay thank you rohan with this we come to the end of our industry insight session thank you rohan rishav and anshula for sharing your journeys with us and clearing all the nagging doubt in each student's mind and thank you all for attending this talk we hope it proved to be insightful and will help you achieve your dreams please fill up the please feedback up. form that has been put up in the chat box each suggestion is valuable to us good night and all the best thank you guys for having us here thanks